Hi guys, welcome to Learner Maths tutorial brought to you by Direct Tutoring. Today we're going to have a look at sketching quadratics. So if we take a quick overview, a quadratic can be sketched in several different ways depending on the information that is provided in the question. Quadratic, also known as a parabola, can either have a maximum or a minimum turning point. Now this is the key characteristic of solving a quadratic equation and for sketching a quadratic equation. If you follow a systematic approach then you shouldn't have much issues when you come to solve any of these problems. And the key thing here is don't remember the steps but try and learn them. If you can learn why each step takes place and what it is that you're actually trying to find, it will make your life so much easier. So if we take a look at question number one, it asks us to sketch the graph of y equals x squared plus 6x plus 5. So the key points that we have to find are the roots, the y-intercept, the turning point coordinate, and the nature of the turning point. So if we find the roots first, then what we have to do is we need to factorise the equation since we make y equal 0 because we're intersecting the x-axis, so y will be 0. So this should look familiar. Uh, this is, of course, a trinomial also known as a quadratic equation. Um, and this one can be solved by factorization. Now I will put a link in the description on how to factorize trinomials. And this is just a quick overview of the method that I use when solving quadratic equations to factorize. So the first thing that I do is I draw two empty brackets with a cross. Now, the left-hand side of the cross corresponds to the left-hand side of each bracket. Now, the top half corresponds to the first bracket, and the bottom half corresponds to the second bracket. So we need two numbers that will multiply together to give us 5, but add together to give us 6. So in this case, I'm going to put 5 here, I'll put 1 here. Now, this works as a calculator. Because if we do x times 1 plus x times 5, then what happens is we get 6x. And that is the same as that. So that's your first bracket and that's your second bracket. So we get x plus 5, bracket x plus 1. Now if we make them individually equal 0, we can get our two values of x for the roots. So if we plot these, then of course both of these points will have a y value of 0, so that is our roots in place. Now the next thing that we can do is find the turning point coordinates. Now this is, depending on how the question provides the information, if it gives you it in, say, completing the square format, you can read the turning point very easily. However, the turning point um, of a parabola is directly in the middle of the roots. So if we take the average of the roots, we will get the x-coordinate of the turning point. So we just do minus 5 plus minus 1 is minus 6, divided by 2 is minus 3. So now that we have the x-coordinate of the turning point, the way that we find the corresponding y-value is by substituting the x equals minus 3 into this equation and that will give us the corresponding value of y. So this here tells us that the turning point is at minus 3 minus 4 and we can plot that there. Now the next thing when we when we deal with the turning point normally we would tend to continue on and deal with the nature. Now the nature is very, very easy to spot if you only consider the x squared term. So the x squared term, if it is a positive value, then it is a minimum turning point. 
And if the x squared value is negative, then we have a maximum turning point. So what we're interested in is the sign in front of the x squared term. Not any of these, just the x squared. So in this case, because this is a plus, we have a minimum turning point and more informally known as a smiley graph because you have the smiley graph that goes like that or you have a sad graph which goes in the opposite direction. But for this case, because we're positive x squared, we have a minimum turning point, which means we have a smiley graph. And then lastly, we need to find out where this curve cuts the y-axis. So if we cut the y-axis, the inverse of the roots, we make x equal 0 because here, if we cut the y-axis, x is neither positive or negative, x must be 0. So if we substitute in x is 0, then we get a y value of 5. So our y-intercept becomes 0 and 5. Now that we have all these points, we can begin to connect the dots. So when you draw these, the best thing to do is if you have scaled paper, do it to scale. If not, try and judge the scale. However, the key thing here is to label your points. So the first two that I tend to go for is the roots. We plot the roots, and then we plot roughly where the turning point is, and then where the y-intercept is. And then all you have to do is connect the dots, remembering that we have a minimum turning point so our graph is going to look like a smiley face. And that is exactly what it looks like. So you can see that it goes through all the main points. And in the exam, it doesn't have to be to scale unless stated. But so long as you label the points, then you will get full marks in the exam. And it is as simple as that. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. Leave any comments in the comment section below and we'll see you in the next video.